Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be making Sawyer's puppy haul. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to be showing you all the essentials that you're going to need to bring home your new puppy and some extra things too. We're going to include a few items you may not have thought of, especially if you are a first time dog owner. And we will give you an approximate cost breakdown of core items you definitely need. And we'll also go over the cost of the non-essential items, break them down separately so you have an idea of what it's going to cost you to bring home a new puppy. Okay, so the core items are gonna be those items that you need on day one that you really should have in place before your puppy comes home. And we're gonna start off with the crate. Your dog is going to need his own space to retreat to. You're gonna need it for your sanity. You cannot be watching your puppy 24 seven. Even if you puppy proof your house, there are many, many things that your puppy can get into that you don't want him to get into. And of course you're gonna need it for another most obvious reason, which is potty training. We're not gonna get into all the whys and hows of potty training and the importance of a crate. Just suffice to say that it is extremely important to get them used to it. It's not cruel. Dogs are denning animals by nature. And you'll see that they will come to prefer, even if you leave the door open, they really enjoy having their own space. Also thinking ahead, if you are gonna get your dog spayed or neutered, or they're gonna need any kind of medical procedure and sometimes they need for their own safety to be put away from other animals or things in the house, a crate is great for that. If you have people over your house, maybe they don't like dogs and you don't wanna to have to acclimate your dog to a crate when you're facing one of those situations and he's not used to it and you're gonna just put him in there and they're gonna cry, they're gonna to struggle to get out, they're not gonna feel comfortable. So you wanna start it early and then you have a crate trained pup. You may never use the crate again, but if there ever comes a time where you need to, then you can and they're not going to freak out about it. Crate. Okay, so let's talk about the size of this one. This crate is 24 inches long by 18 inches wide by 19 inches high. I really like it. This brand is Midwest. I got it from Chewy.com. I like it because it has a side door and a front door. So whatever room you put it in, you can easily configure. Okay, so second item up, which is definitely something you're gonna need is a crate pad. I got this one, which is the exact size of the crate, which you want so that there's no room for them to feel like they wanna tug the corners and rip at it when it fits really well. That's best and safest. I got this at TJ Maxx for $9.99. You're gonna see that most of the things here I got at TJ Maxx, Marshalls or Home Goods because I absolutely love them for pet supplies. They are so much cheaper than Petco or PetSmart and they actually even have a better, cuter, nicer selection in my opinion. So this one also has a zip off cover, which is really great. So then you can just throw it in the washing machine and you can preserve it because chances are somewhere along the line, something dirty is gonna get on there. And the reason I haven't put this one inside there yet is because I am using the crate divider that it comes with to make this crate a bit smaller for him because it was too big. And once he did poop in here because he felt just fine that he had enough room to go into the corner and squat. So I quickly realized I needed to put in the divider. Another thing I love about this crate is that they do come with dividers. So you can really get your money's worth. You don't have to buy a smaller crate and then upgrade. So inside here, I actually just have um, my husband's sweatshirt and I have this pad, which is actually a heating pad. It has a warming material inside of it, just like, you know, if you have like a Columbia jacket or a winter coat like that, where they have that reflective material, it uses the dog's own body heat to make it nice and warm. So yeah, it is kind of messy with this flap, but Sawyer is not a big chewer of things like this, so it's been okay. And quite honestly, he's been in here very, very short periods of time. He spent maybe half of his first night in here or maybe an hour or two of his first night. Then he slept in my bed and he has been in there just really times when if I need to shower and I can't watch him he's been in here. So he's been in here for like intervals of maybe 15, 20 minutes at a time. And he has done amazingly. He just took to it right away. He really does not even cry. And one key thing is always take them out before they cry. Never let them get to the point of knowing that crying gets you out and keep it for short periods. But we're going to be making a whole video on how to create trains. So watch for that. So let's move on. Okay, so this is not an essential item, but since we're on the crate, we'll stick with it. I got this crate cover and I got it at Chewy also. I really do like them. 
So it closes completely if you want it to. The side Velcro. It's a really tight fit though, I must say. They could have made this a little bit bigger. Like it's very, very small. I like honey. <laughs> like if I washed this, I would definitely have to wash this in cold water and not put it in the dryer because if it even shrank a little bit, it really wouldn't fit. So I'm not too crazy about that feature, but I like how you can roll it up. So of course you can use the front, you can use the side. I do wish that once it were rolled up, it had like a little flap with Velcro that could secure it. I could see this being a problem. Dogs that are very mm, <laughs> love to chew things or a little rambunctious will drag this, pull it into their crate, start ripping and chewing it. That's not him. So we've been really lucky with that. Or maybe you want to get a cover later on when they are out of their puppy chewing phase. But what I love about the cover is that it really gives it that den-like feel and all the distractions of the room are out. Okay, so you're also going to need a comfy bed and these are like really easy to find. Again, I got this one from Home Goods. I'm pretty sure it was $9.99. They always have these little cuddle beds. I like the cozy high sides. They feel nice and snug in them. He will probably outgrow this, but that's okay because my little chihuahuas will fit into this. Okay, so next thing, of course, you're going to need something for your pup to eat out of. You're going to need some bowls. I really like stainless steel because it's the cleanest. It doesn't hold germs like ceramic or certainly plastic you really don't want. So as you can see, got these at Home Goods for $12.99 and definitely this would be $20, $25 at any specialty pet store. It's a great size for him. It's a little bit raised because his ears have been getting into the little bowl that I've been using. I haven't wanted to use these yet until I made this video. So I can't wait to get these opened up and use these. And now about the food. So he came to me eating this food, which actually I like this food and I have used it in the past. This is the health, Holistic Health Extension Little Bites Formula chicken and brown rice and the kibble is really tiny. You could see this, let's see, this bag is four pounds and it is $15.99. The kibble is super tiny for his little mouth. So this is the canned food that I use and I switched, I switched to this day one and it was fine because I was just putting like a teaspoonful. It didn't upset him. Whole Earth Farms chicken and turkey recipe. Ian's chicken, chicken broth, turkey, turkey liver, sweet potatoes, apples, carrots, natural flavor. And you know, so the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, nine ingredients are amazing. So I really like this. All right. And then this is the other, they come in like maybe five or six varieties, but I really like these because they're not in gravy. They're more of a pate. This is the red meat recipe and the ingredients are Beef, beef broth, beef liver, salmon, peas, carrots, sweet potatoes, dried egg, natural flavor, and then on to vitamins and minerals. So I think these are excellent and I really like these. So this is what he has been eating. And he gives it definitely two paws up. Oh, one more thing. This I got for his, it's like a placemat for his food bowls. And again, I got this at Marshall's for $5.99. It's 100% cotton. You could wash this. I think it's so cute. I wouldn't call this a necessity, but quite honestly, in my house, it is a necessity. Chews and toys. And chews, oh my gosh, a necessity. If this is your first puppy, you may not realize just how much puppies teeth and chew. I mean, whatever they can get their little teeth on, their sharp little teeth on, they are going to chew. It's a great way to keep them busy when you need to get stuff done. So chew toys. So I got these puppy teething rings. I really love these. This is the chicken flavor. You get six of these. And I got these again at Marshall's. I wish it had a price on it because I know that these are quite expensive in the puppy stores and you definitely can get them for a really nice price. My Marshall's always has these. So here is one that he has been chewing on already. And what I really like is that, you know, he's a smaller breed. He doesn't have powerful chewing. He's not a really big, heavy chewer so that 
these are lasting a very long time for him. You can see all his little puppy teeth marks, like five o'clock in the morning when he wakes up, wants to go out, and then he wants to lay in my bed and chew for like a half an hour before he falls asleep again. This has been doing the job. Okay, so I also have these, and these are chicken and rawhide twists. And again, these came from TJ Maxx, and these are $7.99. You get 20 in here. Again, that's a super great price. Um, now, I know a lot of people don't like rawhide. However, what I will say is these are wrapped in chicken. And, you know, you're going to always be supervising your dog also. But my all-time favorite chew for my dogs are bully sticks. They have some decently sized ones, like in Costco. I've seen the price go from like, oh my God. What the heck? Anyway, yeah, I've seen bully sticks in Costco go from like $25 a bag to now they're $35 a bag. It's crazy. So these are the six inch ones. This is a really nice size for him. This is grass-fed beef. It's 100% digestible. They don't have a smell. They don't make a mess anywhere. They're really hard chew. They do last a really long time. And check it out. Compare it $18. Yes, that's true. I just saw these in PetSmart for about that, for Petco. And I got these for $9.99. It's great for their teeth. So bully sticks. If you can find them, you will love them and more importantly, so will your dog. Now, I usually don't buy stuff like this, but when we were in the puppy store getting, oh my God, this cat. You're such a stalker, you look like a bat. So anyway, when I was in the store getting his collar and harness, the ladies gave me like seven little free samples individually wrapped of these, and he ended up really liking them. So this is a box of these fresh kisses from Merrick. You get 36 in this box. What did I pay? Mm-hmm. I paid $11, no, I'm sorry. I paid $12 on clearance and it says compare $22. Honestly, again, I saw these for $25, I believe, a box, which is just crazy. So I usually don't buy dog treats that have these kind of ingredients. It's pea starch, tapioca starch, vegetable glycerin, gelatin. But the reason that I did get these for him is because, again, his teeth are not strong enough. He's not been eating them. He's just using them to chew on. So I am okay with that. They keep him nice and busy. I do want to show you what it looks like. Okay, so they're really cute, like little toothbrush things. But of course, if they do eat the whole thing, you know, it's nothing dangerous for them. Let's see, we'll leave that there for him. So, okay, so that about covers the chew treats. Now let's talk about chew toys. <laughs> I'll just have, just have a number of them. Sometimes they come in packs. So we have this little rubber ball. Again, this wouldn't be good if you had a really powerful chewer. I feel like they could really rip this, but that's not him and that's not my other dogs. You know, they always seem to love stuffed animals. So, you know, he has this and these eyes are embroidered on. You don't want any that are, you know, those hard little round eyes or noses that they could swallow. Okay, this was like a two pack that came with a little dog bone. It's here somewhere, he's been using it and it came with this also. $3.99 from HomeSense. These dog rings. I've bought these before for other puppies. They never liked them or played with them. He actually really likes these a lot. And here's just one other thing. It has like a little crinkly noise inside. This little guy has a squeaker, but it's okay. And I just bought him this. I didn't give it to him yet either. I don't want to give him all the toys at once, like I said, and then they're all lost at once. TJ Maxx, $3.99, this cute little ducky. Oh, and also a ball for fetch. I like this one because they can grab their little teeth on it. It's like a little big for him, but actually they're not too big. Okay, so now let's talk about something else that is going to be necessary, and that is training treats because you're going to want to praise them for many things right in the beginning. 
namely potty training and then you'll want to start with other things too like some basic little commands and tricks and things like that so these are the ones just some of the ones that i've been using uh this one i used up this was the zooks little links chicken and apple recipe grain free sausage chicken apples carrots potatoes maple syrup you know really nice ingredients some just really look at the backs of the dog treats because some of them are really pretty pretty junky ingredients they may even be expensive and have some really low quality ingredients and remember your puppy is newly home he or she can be stressed they are maybe you're changing their food slowly and you don't want to have things that have a lot of weird ingredients and preservatives so actually i'm a big fan of single ingredient treats of course because it's going to have the least potential to be bothersome to your dog and it's the healthiest for their teeth their digestion and everything so i like these pure bites one ingredient 100 percent natural so this is just just freeze dried chicken I think these were maybe around six dollars a bag but you actually really do get a lot and if I can make a suggestion get the beef liver because the chicken they crumble apart into a million little pieces okay so now we're gonna move on to some grooming accessories and what you're really gonna need the number one thing you're gonna need is a great natural shampoo I absolutely love this Bobby Panter brand it is a moisturizing dog shampoo. It is tear free. So if you get it in their eyes by mistake, you're all good. So I love the smell of this. It comes in maybe like four or five varieties and it smells amazing, like I said. And I know that I picked this up at Marshall's, but I haven't been able to find it there recently, which is why I'm pretty low on it. But it's so concentrated and he's so little that a little goes a long way. Okay, the only second item that I would call a necessity in this category is a nail clipper because you're really going to want to get them used to it from pretty much the get-go. So this is one that I have for my Chihuahuas. It's definitely the smallest size available. It's really tiny, but his nails are teeny tiny right now. So, of course, these come in all different sizes. If you have a larger breed puppy, just get a larger one. Oh, actually, okay, one more is, is pretty much a necessity depending on the kind of coat your dog has, and that is a brush or a comb. This I like. So this is a natural bristle brush, and it has this nice soft side, and it has this side. I wouldn't really start with those slicker brushes, you know, those pin brushes. I'm not a big fan of them, honestly, kind of like this, because they kind of can hurt or pull little tangles in your puppy's ears. And remember, you're just getting them started, so... It's really nice to have something soft. Come on. Ooh, one more thing I wanna talk about with the grooming, which I have not gotten for him yet because you know you don't need that on day one, but it is a dog toothbrush and toothpaste. Or if you don't wanna use a commercial dog toothpaste, maybe you just wanna use coconut oil. I do that on my other dog's teeth. But you know what? I use toddler toothbrushes i like the oral b toddler toothbrushes not a specific dog toothbrush i just always find that they're just too big for my dog's mouth the other item that i got was these and i've looked at these in the stores and always thought ah that's really not necessary and it's really not necessary but his little paws are pretty furry and hairy compared to my other dogs. I thought I would give these a try and I've actually been liking them quite a lot. So where did I get them? You already know Marshall's $4.99. These would be eight bucks, which is really pricey for what they are. Okay, but the reason that I got it too is I'm just a big checker of ingredients and I really like the ingredients on here, which is herbal extract, essential protein, aloe vera, lanolin, vitamins A and E, oatmeal, botanical extracts, baking soda, and mild fragrance. Oh, and by the way, they do smell absolutely amazing. You wanna get some pet waste bags. And of course you wanna keep your own backyard nice and clean. And if you don't have a backyard and you are, you know, you take your puppy out for a walk, you wanna be that responsible dog owner and always have these with you. Once again, these came from Home Goods or Home Sense. And these were $4.99 for $160. I always have so many of these on hand. Every time I see them, I just pick up a box. These ones are lemon scented, so that's kind of nice. You can find them in many different scents. I have scented and unscented. But yeah, these are 
these uh, these are a necessity. Okay, we have one more important vital category that you are going to need right away, and that is leash slash harness slash collar and tag. Oops. <laughs> His collar, I got this at my local pet shop. This is the eight to 12 inch size and he is about halfway there on this. I mean, he may never need another larger size collar. Who knows? We are not sure what size he's gonna end up. This is like $5.99 for this. It's just a basic nylon. This I got at Petco, this adorable little charm and has his, of course, name and phone number on the back of it. I really thought that one was cute. I got this again at my local pet store. I just absolutely love this like faux Burberry print. It looks so good with his coloring. This is the second one that I've gotten. The first one that I got was an XX small. And I could tell that that was quickly, he was going to quickly outgrow that. They were nice enough to let me exchange it a couple of days later for the extra small, which this brand is called The Worthy Dog. This is another one that we like used in the interim. Again, this is from my Chihuahua who is six pounds. This is an extra small. The brand is Voyager and this actually fits him really nicely. But I'm not crazy about him in red. You know, they're all different. Like this is an X small and this is an X small and there's quite a difference in the size of them. So definitely when you get your harness for your puppy, if you don't get it in person where you can, you know, they let me try this on him, then you really have to pay attention to those measurement charts. They're very different. I know that Papilla brand is just made for small dogs. So it's like the extra, extra large is like for a 20 pound dog. So pay attention to that. Okay. And last but not least in that category is a leash. I just got the basic black nylon leash. It doesn't get dirty easily. And I got the six foot length, which I really like. Uh, sometimes you might think if you have a small dog, then you're gonna go for a four foot, but honestly, it's just the opposite. Your smaller dog is going to be closer to the ground, so you're gonna need that length. Um, if you have a larger dog, that is close up to you that you don't want to have so much freedom on the leash, especially while they're learning to walk nicely, then, you know, a four foot might be better for you. But I did like the six foot. So this is like $6.99 or $7.99 or something like that. All right, two more things I wanna cover really quickly, guys. You may not have thought about this. The first one is a carry bag. I love this one. This brand is Top Paw. I am almost positive that I got this at PetSmart, yes. But it has a thick mat that is washable and cushiony. It also has this tether that you can put onto their harness. Had him in the stores in this already. He's done very, very well in here. And it has like nice pockets for cell phone, for your wallet. These are really big. Has this on the side um, for, you know, ventilation on both sides. And you can also, now he has definitely tried chewing on this, but this goes over the whole top of it. So if you have a really squirmy animal that's going to try to like get out of the bag, then you have that or to maybe acclimate them to it. And if you don't need it, you can just roll it away. And again, to keep them protected before they have all their shots, but you still want to get them out and about and start acclimating them to things, stores, people, noises. This is awesome. Now this was probably about, I feel like it was about $75 and I'll try to look that up and put it on the screen, but I know it was pretty expensive, but it really was worth it. If it's something that you're going to use, it's worth it. Okay. So this is the other item that I see maybe a lot of people not think of, and this is a dog car seat. So I have already had this for several years for again, my Chihuahua. So this, um, I did get it, believe it or not. I did find this in Marshall's. I don't see them there too frequently and the brand is Kurgo. So it has this fleecy interior that you can, you can see mine's kind of faded and a bit dirty, but you could take this out and wash it. We got a little dog bed in there just to make it more cushy. It has this tether. Yeah, that's been chewed by prior puppies. This goes over the back of your headrest in the car, and this goes around the seat to clip in the back. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a dog car seat. Don't let your dog sit on your lap. Don't start that. They're going to really prefer that if, if they can, 
but it's so much safer for you and for your dog. And you can just have like a sane ride. Like nobody wants a dog just, you know, all up on their lap. It's just, it's too crazy. I see people do this and the dog hanging out the window. I just, I personally don't get it. I like my dog nice and safe. They're right next to you on this seat. You know, he sits in the front seat. We made a video on getting him acclimated to this seat that if you're interested, I think you'll find it really, really helpful. So I will also link that in the description. Sit. Good boy. So I hope that this video was helpful to you. I think we covered everything. If there's something I forgot or if there is something that you consider necessary or has been helpful to you with your new puppy, please feel free to just chime in, leave us that as a comment of what worked for you, maybe what didn't work for you, what you thought was necessary, and then maybe later on found out you really didn't need to spend the money. And if you found this video helpful and you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, paw or pause up. I'll take that too. And thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Oh, excuse you. <laughs>